continuing with system architecture and uh, looking to the the components of a system at its uh, most basic level um, and looking first at the the hardware components uh, we we have our our very basic fundamental breakdown we have the CPU uh, we have memory uh, we have input and output channels and uh, we have storage um, now in days gone by uh, uh, a lot of these things could be uh, broken down sub divided um, the uh, the CPU for example uh, we would have a an arithmetic logic unit we would have a control unit um, we would have the input and output controls uh, and and controllers as as separate uh, components um, nowadays of course it's all uh, on a single chip but uh, we've gone a, a bit further than that and now we have for example multi-core architectures so we have a a single CPU that may have multiple CPUs on it the 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 chip itself which we're you know most people would just refer to as as the CPU actually has separate central processing units now when we've got these multi-core architectures um, we can as I believe I've mentioned uh, actually set up race conditions and anytime you set up a race condition where um, uh, separate processes that are going on um, may have different uh, completion times and the results of these same processes may differ depending on which function completes first we have a vulnerability we have an inconsistency um, and and that sets up a, a possibility of uh, a vulnerability and an exploit and and potential security problems so uh, we, you know we, we have simplified in a sense um, the actual physical components and increased the complexity of what is going on inside those components uh, so uh, again we're um, you know we have to be aware of these possibilities and the security implications of what we're doing in in regard to the architecture um, uh, then we've got um, we've got memory um, again uh, in the old days we we may have had different types of memory we had uh, 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 well uh, static uh, memories um we we had uh uh different types of memory uh i mean there's mercury delay lines there and you know which gave you a uh sort of a, a linear circular memory where you could uh read information at a given time as it's sort of cycling around the track um we had uh drum memories uh that gave us faster access speeds to to groups of bits at a time as opposed to uh, addressing a particular location and, and just grabbing that um, uh, so again you know we had different types of of architectures there um, and they would give us different advantages and disadvantages um, the uh, uh, today uh, you know it's mostly uh, dynamic random access memory we we address a memory location we get that memory location uh, but again you know how how wide is the uh, data channel there how much uh, how many bits are we getting at a time when we're when we're pulling uh, information in from memory uh, do we uh, uh, block off the uh, 
the information that comes in that, that is perhaps outside the realm of what we want, um, we, we have to be aware of those things. In addition, we've got the fact that the, um, the, the memory systems uh, that we've got nowadays, we have memory actually sometimes on the CPU. Um, we have cache memory, which uh, we can read very quickly uh, that, you know, maybe adjacent to the CPU. Uh, and then we have the main memory of the system. Then we have paging of memory where we use the secondary storage as uh, a way of pretending that we have extended the memory. And, uh, you know, that gives us the ability to uh, have virtual memory, but at the expense of speed because the secondary storage, generally speaking, is, is slower than the uh, uh, storage that we've got. In addition, you know, we, we play additional tricks. Um, uh, we've got, uh, you know, mostly disk drives for, for large-scale secondary storage these days, but we've got uh, solid-state drives that may be almost as fast as uh, main memory um, so that we can... Uh, direct uh, uh, information that we're swapping in and out doing the paging to these uh, uh, solid state storage devices uh, which are going to be faster than writing to and accessing uh, disk drives. And so we've got, um, again, issues to be aware of and, and there are going to be security implications in, in that regard. Um, the uh, the input and output, of course, the, the management of um, uh, accessing, well, you know, again, you know, input and output from the, um, uh, from the CPU uh, possibly to the memory, uh, from the CPU um, uh, mediating between the main memory and secondary storage sometimes. Uh, and then, of course, all the... Uh, standard input-output devices that we think of, you know, the keyboard, the uh, mouse or other pointing devices, the uh, uh, monitors and so forth. And, and we have to be aware of some of these things. For example, monitors are considered to be strictly output devices. But now with HDMI, we have um, information uh, being transmitted back to the computer from the monitor. Um, now, you know, this is done for the purpose of uh, ensuring that our uh, uh, monitors are, are displaying properly, um, uh, displaying at the, at the right resolution, uh, you know, all kinds of reasons that you would, you would want to know information from the monitor. But um, the way that it is implemented, this does present the possibility of a vulnerability that uh, the monitor itself may be used uh, to attack the computer. That, that you can input, in, in some cases, directions to the computer. And at any time that you are allowing the computer to run some uh, code from someone or something else, you have the possibility of an attack. You have the possibility of a vulnerability there. Um, uh, so, and, and then again, the, uh, the secondary storage, um, we have the, uh, we have the disk drives, we have, we have solid state drives, we have, uh, you know, all kinds of, of technologies. We have to be aware of some of those. Um, the, uh, uh, very interesting, uh, problems with small device forensics now. Um, some of the solid state memories, uh, it's impossible to retrieve data once it's deleted. Uh, some it's impossible or almost impossible to delete information. So, all kinds of implications.